ahead and get started now that Alex has a flip camera. Um, contrary to popular belief, this says managing client expectations, but I'm Therese, and I'm going to take the mirror. <laughs> so, uh, just kidding. Um, we are actually, I'm glad to see all of y'all here. We are expecting to have not a lot, because obviously uh, Therese is a very popular guy around these parts. So, welcome to uh, managing client expectations using Drupal as their CMS. Um, my name is David Stagg, and I'm the creative director of a web design company called Shibble. In case you can't tell, all the guys up here are from Shibble. And um, we uh, have a good time working with Drupal as a CMS. We um, sell custom web solutions for anybody that has a problem. So whether it's uh, something small like a brochure website, e-commerce, uh, anything complex. Uh, we use three different content management systems within our company. Uh, WordPress, we have a proprietary software called Tendency, and we also use Drupal. We try to find the accurate solution for whatever the client's problem may be. So if it's something small like a WordPress site and the company doesn't have, you know, it's a, a huge budget, we can do something simple and cheaper using WordPress. Uh, Tendency kind of comes out of the box and we'll kind of address that a little bit throughout this uh, presentation. But when we have incredibly complex websites, uh, we always go to Drupal because it's pretty much infinitely customizable which tends to cause some problems sometimes, which is hopefully the reason you're in here. So, um, like I said, my name is David, I'm the creative director, I've been uh, there for about three years now, and I'm going to introduce these guys, but just so you get to know us, we're also going to ask them, what's the worst TV show they'll get to watch you? So, uh, mine's the OC, I don't know if you remember it, it was the Josh Schwartz um, back in college. <laughs> It was incredible. I never missed uh, an episode as it aired live, so that was before DVR. Uh, so I will admit to watching it. I love it, and uh, you'll get to make fun of these guys too in just a second. <laughs> cool. My name is Derek Key. I'm a project manager at Triple. I've been there for a little over two years now. Um, the TV show that I will admit to watching, unfortunately, is anything with The Bachelor in the title. <laughs> the Bachelorette, Bachelor Pad. And I'd like to blame it on my fiance, but I would probably watch it if she didn't, so that's fine. Well, my name is Albert Hughes. I also am a project manager at Shippel. I enjoy Drupal. I've been using Drupal probably since, I think, 2007. Um, the TV show for me is probably like Dawson's Creek rerun. What? <laughs> 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 Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is John Michael Oswald. Uh, I also work at Shippel. Uh, everyone calls me JMO, so you can feel free to call me JMO. Um, I work actually as a product manager for our tenancy product. It's more of a kind of an out of the box solution. So today I'll be giving kind of a different perspective. Um, I've worked with Drupal for almost two years now, uh, but working with tenancy, I get to see kind of how a more finished product, less customization, compares to Drupal and offering that and managing clients on that product. So I'll be offering kind of a different point of view for that. Uh, and then I would say my TV show is uh, The Skins, but the British version. Not the MTV one, the real good one. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. It's not real good. Uh, I want to say this up front, but uh, just before we get started, um, Drupal is a very community-oriented thing, and a lot of what we're going to be talking about is our experience of what we've gone through with clients. Um, but I'm sure everybody has their own tips and tricks, so don't hesitate to raise your hand or chime in or speak to something that somebody else has uh, set up here. Um, we'd love to hear from you all as well as to how it is, because whatever you may have done to help a situation move along uh, could help somebody else in the room. So don't hesitate to raise your hand and uh, chime in. So two things we're really going to do today are, um, first and foremost, we're going to look at the things to look out for when you actually get into a project or you start to uh, uh, either in the kickoff, uh, kickoff meeting or in the sales process, uh, kind of what we would call red flags. Uh, and the second thing is ways to treat it before and after it's happened. So whether you are like realize you're really close to going live and you're about to see this bomb blow up, or the bomb has already blown up and you're $200 into a $100 project. So uh, those are basically the two things that we're going to be covering here today. So um, what our company does, like I said earlier, is we sell custom solutions. And if somebody comes to us and they need a website or they need some kind of help with their current website or something like that, and uh, we always know that it's going to be custom to what they want. So. In, uh, anybody, any freelancers in here? Anybody do freelance? Okay, there, there are a few of you all, and I feel for you because you get to do the process everything. So from start to finish, you have to do the sale, you have to figure out how to build it, design it, maybe you outsource part of that. Um, you have to do the whole thing. In our company, we're blessed to have a business development department. So for better or for worse, we trust to them that they're going to sell uh, an accurate cost for whatever it is that the client needs. So 
What we call that is defining custom. So when in the sales process, they go on and they speak to the client and they try to figure out exactly what the client needs. They go through the content types uh, when it comes to Drupal. They educate the client about what Drupal is and what a content type may be. And so they, they spend a good time defining custom with them. And at that point, they can actually, uh, that one's coming next. At that point, they can actually uh, estimate a certain amount of hours based on what those customizations may be. So when you have an accurate hour count, um, they're actually going to use these hours to what we call make the most of the customization. Because if we kind of if we say we have 200 hours in a project, um, everybody's used to the kind of experience where you suddenly realize the third revision of a layout or the fourth revision of a layout, and the client get, can't can't get past the fact that that photo isn't the photo that they want or something like that. You really need to realize, um, okay, well we have hours, and we can keep using these hours, but at a certain point we can't in keep infinitely customizing this. So we try to explain to them that we use the hours to make the most of that customization that they've sold. So uh, I'm going to kind of move on here to, I'm going to call this the war story. And this happened to us once in our company, and all names shall remain nameless. We absolutely love our clients. Um, but in one of our letters of engagement, or in one of our, what do you call it, a contract or proposal, whatever, um, somebody had put something along uh, tweaks to the custom template. So it's a fairly ambiguous thing. Uh, so just to kind of put it into perspective, <coughs> let's pretend that uh, I'm the client here and I'm going to ask you guys, or you guys are going to be the client, I'm going to ask you guys, uh, what, if I ask you this question, how you would interpret it as a client? Hey, welcome. Come on in. So we're going to take uh, this screenshot here. This is one of our clients through Envoy Mortgage. I want to preface this by saying that this is not the client this, this happened to. And we love this, we love this client, and they are great, and I do not want to sully their name um, just because we're using them as an example. Uh, so that being said, we're going to go through this. So let's say that I'm the project manager, and, and in my letter of engagement, it actually did say uh, tweaks to the custom, or custom tweaks to the template. Jamo, uh, how would you interpret that? Well, um, the first thing, looking at this, and you know, maybe I'm the CEO or I'm kind of on the other side of the client and I want to see what kind of tweaks I want to make. So, uh, obviously as a client, I want to make the logo bigger. That's one thing. Stretch that logo a little bit. Uh, I may want to make where it says Learning Center. Let's make that a little larger uh, so our headings stand out. Uh, and then where that link is underlined, that word mortgage, I don't like those underlines. So maybe we make the links bold instead. Okay, so everybody here kind of says, okay, you know, that's not too bad. It's kind of an aesthetic change. It's something we're willing to say, yeah, we can do that within the scope of the project. That's not too difficult at all. But all right, I would, let's say I asked you the exact same question. Um, right here under this at our resource center, could we have a running list of the latest articles? I'd also like a thumbnail of the article author of their picture to the left of it. Okay, fair enough. Uh, we're kind of moving into development here. Uh, we could probably do this, but at that point I start to ask a lot more questions about exactly where that's going to come from, and we'll kind of address that later. But for the most part, I, I think we can probably take care of your solution within the scope of the project. So, uh, Derek, let's say I asked you the same question. Yeah. Um, for my mortgage company, we offer actually a couple different types of mortgage solutions, and so a lot of people aren't interested in all the other stuff, so kind of depending on where you go, we, our templates are going to, you know, it's going to have like one image for the one solution, another image for another. Okay. Um, and all of our content is, you know, published by our staff, so we want them on the sidebar if they wrote it. Okay. And it's going to have their name, obviously, and then the last few posts by them as well. Okay. Um, and you know, our company, like, we all love our animals, so yeah. we, we have like, I know, I know. Yeah, we have, so we, we have a thumbnail right there with the person of sure. a picture of their dog, of course. Right, right, well, okay. Yeah, and so and that's all going to be kind of based on the different um, pieces of content on our site. Excellent. That's how we're going to tweak our template. Okay. So you can see, it's, it's pretty obvious, if you've ever been in this situation where one person, it may be something simple and aesthetic, but it can quickly spiral out of control to um, what we, would, we keep referring to as infinitely customizable, so. Um, yeah, we, we've seen a lot of people, there are kind of specific examples that with Drupal, everything is so custom that it kind of gets out of hand. Um, there's all the generic stuff like Jamal mentioned, make the logo bigger, of course everyone wants the logo bigger. Um, and there's content stuff that we've even seen because people think it's Drupal, I get custom everything. And so we've had clients where we've, they envisioned a custom formatted page for every page. Not a content, like a, a page that they put content in, but we design each page with JavaScript text that you click and it expands, and not where you would even maybe think like an FAQ page, but everywhere. Um, and so it kind of got crazy, and then 
people see it, especially too, with your like on the home page. But that client fully believed that that's what we were going to do is Correct. format every single page of content on the website. And that's how they do it. Because it's custom. We right. Had a custom, custom template, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we had a doctors also are very particular people, and that's a good thing when they're operating on you. Um, <laughs> when they are operating on their website, it's not so good. So <laughs> they, you know, we have like a, a content type of a doctor created that we can populate to different places. The home page is built, and now they want to show all of the doctors because they've got new doctors that have come on, and they say, well, these are there, Drupal's customizable, we can pull them all in now. Not knowing that, well, we've only got this much room. So um, what we kind of help to, to help to explain to them is we use an analogy of a house, and it's great if you can do this early on, and it sucks when you forget and it kind of bites you in the butt, but the earlier on that we can explain to them <laughs> building your site like a house, we can put this room there, and we have a custom room, whatever you want it to be, and then we can fill it up accordingly. But we can't make the living room now a kitchen. Because it kind of, you've got to put in piping, all this stuff. So we can, we can decorate the room, but it's there, but designing the room is a little bit different. And I think right there, it's like design versus development. And I think starting off and getting the information into the client's head that there's a big difference between a design tweak and a development tweak. A lot of times design tweaks may take 10 to 15 minutes where they can ask for a development tweak that could take 10, an additional 10 hours. So I think getting it into the client's head what those differences are and being able to ask the right questions to, so that as a project manager, you know the difference between their, their request if it's a design tweak or a development tweak. Um, kind of going on the house thing like a quick like a quick way, I try to get clients that, that in their head is design, after a house is built, design might be, hey, the living room, I would like that color to be different. Versus a development change may be, well, I like an extra closet in that, in that room. So there's a big difference. And when clients ask for tweets, you want to make sure you ask those right questions to know specifically what they want, the specific changes that they want, so you don't end up digging yourself in a hole and you're able to provide them with an accurate um, like an accurate estimate on how long that would take or how much additional that would take. Cool. So let's go back to uh, our good friends in Envoy. And at this point, uh, I'm going to get to be a client and then Albert's going to get to be my project manager. And this, is all, this is always fun for me. So I say, uh, we're about two weeks from going live, or at least the CEO is expected to go live today. And I come to Albert, and I'm just a member of the marketing team, and I say, you know, I met with the CEO last week. It's the first time I've seen the site. And uh, you know, he decided he wanted just a couple changes. Uh, the first is um, he has kind of bad sight, so he'd like to make the headings just a little bit bigger, you know. And the links right there, they kind of blend in for the black, so he wanted to maybe change and make it maybe bold or, or red or something like that. Is, is that something we can do pretty quickly? Hey, who loves when all of a sudden you've been working with somebody on the website, then they have that, that quick quote of, my CEO has now seen this item, my CEO said, and you know they should have been looking at it a while back. But in this particular case, the questions that he actually, or the requests and the tweets he made, they sound like design tweets. He wanted the logo changed, right? No, I want um, my headers bigger and I want links changed. Headers bigger and the links changed. Does everybody agree that sounds more like design changes? Um, I can say, hey, right. <laughs> those design changes, that does seem like something that we can do in the scope. We want our clients to be happy. That's within the project scope. We can definitely do that. Awesome, and there's only one more thing. Uh, I don't think it's too, I'm pretty sure it's pretty easy. Uh, we just like to put a blog feed in, uh, under the resource center over there. Uh, we just found out that one of our junior members has been blogging, and uh, he's doing a really good job, and the CEO likes it, so he'd like to actually start to pull those in on the sidebar. Okay, so now we're looking at here, and it sounds a little bit more, more complex than just a regular design change. As we all know, he wants to add a blog, so I should be asking the right questions. Are they already blogging on the software? Is, is blogging part of the LOE? How should that blog look on the home page? Because if he says he just wants a list of titles and we have, we have an available region, we may be able to drop that in there. But now if he wants a little bit more custom things, then it may take some more time. So some of the questions I may ask is, are you already blogging on the software? Uh, he's, he's actually using an external, something called WordPress that okay. uh, he's been working on. Uh, we just kind of like to take it through over there. On the home page, would you just like a list of titles? Do you need that to be custom? Yeah, we'll take a, yeah, it doesn't have to be too custom, just you know, maybe a list of titles and the author's name or something like that. Okay. Um, 
We would need to check it out. It sounds like it may be some development. I took a look at your LOE that's that's not in there, mm -hmm. as well as this area, it currently doesn't have a region or it's not built to include a blog fleet. So it, I would like to take that information back to the sales department and see if we can get you an accurate quote on the hours it would take. Excellent. And I, I think the point that I was really trying to make here is you really have to know what questions to ask. There have been many times when you feel like you've exhausted the questions, but we like to make sure our project managers almost piss off the person who keeps getting asked these questions, because trust me, in the long run, you're going to cover some things that you that the client actually didn't know they needed or wanted at that yeah, time. Yeah, I think asking as many asking as much questions up front and letting like trying to uncover those hidden things that even the client may not know that they are requesting, because a lot of times a client in their head is oh. That's just magic. This is Drupal. You said it can do anything. If I ask for it, shouldn't you just be able to grab a module and pop it in and it just pop up on the screen? And sometimes they don't know. So asking the right questions and, and informing them and letting them know that there's a difference between design changes and development changes and some of these things can really spiral out of control. Just because it's a list on the home page, you may have to create a content type, you may have to create the view because once they want the feed on the home page. They want the page, page view. The page they want an RSS feed. And so you just kind of want to make sure that you're going down that complete line to find out all the steps that may come, may be uncovered by asking for a small little tweak on the home page. Yeah. I think what you get when you mentioned, um, they don't really know because they don't know. And so identifying these things early on as these red flags of this can come back to bite us in the end when their expectations and our expectations are different. Um, Another one I've noticed a lot, a lot is like staff pages or about pages. Um, we've seen ranges from an editable page and we've list names on it in text. We've done pages with content types of employees and profiles and it pulls in work they've done, tag and filter. And it can be this huge thing, but if someone, you know, we see we're doing the layouts and they say, oh, staff. We're like, okay, let's talk about your staff page because that's really important to you. It's your people, people are important. Um, so something that we try to identify early on, and those things that, as you recognize, I'm sure there's one that you guys deal with that you're like, people never know what they want. <laughs> so it really helps everyone understand what you're on. Make your expectations the same. Does the sales department do like storyboards before they give it to the? They can, developer? yeah. You know, and a lot of times they try to do that, and they like we see the stuff coming, we see the new project, and they say they need an about us page that shows we did a video production company, so it's, it said. They need a staff page that will link all of their recent work to their profile. And so we know that, but then you sit down with a client, and it, it's only, you're trying to speak the same language. And so that's where they get to say, well, we thought it was going to pull in the most recent 10, and it was going to have one play here, and this was going to be this category, and two feeds on the page. And that's still different than you know, filtering the latest content. But you can easily manage that by coming to some kind of compromise. Exactly. In a specific instance, we say, okay, why don't we just show the latest 10 that you actually sure. tagged, and they're perfectly fine with that. What, what, what they want is usually doable and within scope. It's not like they want crazy stuff, but it's once you build it and then changing the measure twice, cut once, I think that's the rule. Um, right. it's, it's doing that as opposed to, you know, changing it a whole bunch later on. Well, but if they do want crazy stuff, Drupal can handle all that. Right. Sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so if it, you know, if on my staff page I want to have multiple images, and I want that cool thing where you hover over the image and it does the fun picture. You know, it's got the professional picture and the fun picture, right? We, we gotta have that. So, your staff page can handle that, right? You can build that, sure. right? And so, and then maybe I, you know, I also want the the blog feed to come in because a lot of the staff members are bloggers, and I want to see their latest content. And I probably want to put Twitter into that as well because they tweet, and you know, we're all about social media, so. Your staff page can do that as well. You can build that. Oh, well, Twitter feed for the staff sure. And then, and then, you know, absolutely, we gotta must have uh, LDAP integration because all of our user access is built on Windows NT 4.0, and, and there's there's no way we can use this website at all if our staff page can't be logged into with LDAP. Right, right there. But but you can build that, right? Well, yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> so so th these are these are a lot of the questions that you may see, um, and and as someone that. Um, Primarily deals with more of a, a finished product. Um, our product tendency is it's kind of built as one said, and you get it, and there's kind of limited between your settings and stuff, but it's more akin to kind of a software as a service, something like Basecamp you may be familiar with, where you, you kind of get what you get. Um, now, the. the Hello? No problem. So, from our perspective, some of the benefits of that is that every instance is the same. It's very easy to support. It's very easy to kind of we have kind of a clear upgrade path of we want to make this work better and make this work better. 
Um, and some of the kind of the, I guess the benefits of that is that it's, it's very easy to demo, real easy to sell. So if we're trying to demo our staff page, we can go to you know, any of tens of websites and say, this is what the staff page looks like. You can click around. This is what you're going to get. This is staff. Instead of saying staff and, and having them kind of dream up whatever dream scenario. Now, the, the downsides to that of producing a more finished product is that you, you say no a lot. So a client may come to us and they want all this crazy LDAP integration and we can price it out and in our opinion it's, it's going to be too expensive, it's not going to be cost effective, we're never going to make money on that. In it's the not going to work with the product. Right, it's not going to work with the product. So for there we have to say no. Um, now, no is kind of great in terms of stress levels because now we have this big burden off our backs, we don't have to build all this kind of crazy functionality. Uh, but you talk to the sales team and they don't want to ever say no to anything because they want to get their sale. Uh, and if you're if you're you know working on your own and you may price you know we price mostly fixed bid work but if you price based on hours you still don't want a, a uh, you know a job that's going to spiral out of control and you're going to be sucked into this for for two years even if they are paying you you're going to want to have something done you want to finish uh, so in kind of the sense that that our product is is very similar to something like a, like the Toyota company you go to a Toyota dealer and you want to buy a Corolla well, we offer Corollas you can get it in red you can get it in white you can get a sunroof. Um, but we, we don't sell any that go 200 miles an hour, and we don't sell any that are, are uh, convertibles, and we're not going to sell any that have 20 cup holders and custom fitted leather seats. Um, but if you do need a, a motor vehicle like that, you can go buy a Ferrari. And you go down to the Ferrari dealership down the fancy part of town, and they'll sell you whatever you want. You want a lime green Ferrari that's a convertible that has black wheels and has your name inscribed on the back, they'll sell you that. And they'll charge you $250,000, but that's okay. Yeah, and we, we use Drupal so we can say yes. We, we love Drupal. We think it's the best. It's awesome for doing these huge, big projects that we couldn't do otherwise. And so we use it to say yes to clients. Um, the, the thing that we have to kind of be aware of and that you know, everyone does, whether you're freelance work or your uh, design shop, whatever you are, is kind of digging yourself in this hole because people have gone to these other dealerships. They've heard no, they've heard no, they've heard no. And then they come to you because you kind of got a reputation for saying yes. Quick drop in is, I think, is knowing what you're saying yes to. Yeah. Like you, with Drupal, you can say yes, but make sure you know what you're saying yes to and then attaching that with yes, but it's going to take this. Whether it's yes, we can do that, but it's going to take 10 more hours in the project. Yes, we can do that, but it's going to cost this much more money. Um, just saying yes can leave yourself, like you said, in a hole because it's yes, yes, yes. And after if a salesperson has said this is in, if they can fit it in there, class, well, you said yes. I thought yes meant for what we already paid for, we can do it. So yeah. and knowing what you're saying yes for, and then attaching that with yes, and this is what it's going to take to do that. Yeah, it's, it's hard to say no. So we try to say yes, and then you end up doing that, getting the whole. So we try to say yes and do the modifying the scope or editing or adding to it. Um, what we found is really helpful is to do two things: is to prioritize what they. Uh, what they need on their site is to educate the client on the process. That if, if they've got their block of hours or scrum points or whatever they're, they're selling, they can then take, this is what's most important, it's going to take this many hours, this many weeks of the project, and we can get this done, and then we can modify it, we can work on other things. And then when they see what goes into it, so they know it's a process that they're part of, that they have to make decisions so things show up and that's not metric, they start to see the, the work going into it. Um, and they can see it being built and how it comes about. Um, and so the biggest thing that we avoid is this, when j -Mark, when I were doing the, can I do this, yes, can I do this, yes, is that possible doesn't equal included. And so that's when the expectations get all out of line because the client's hearing, yeah, Drupal can do it, can do it, can do it. But we're saying it's possible, but it's not there. And then that's when it, the problems happen is when people aren't the same. Right. The, the client heard, yes, it's included and it's going to happen, where you meant, yes, it's possible, but it may cost more. Exactly. And so that's why just saying yes is kind of a tricky thing, but yes and modifying helps. Yeah, I was just wondering, like, from, the, to, from a typical client perspective, do they really care what content management system I guess some will, but do you explain, like, do you go into detail with, you know, with yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll feel that one. In the sales process, they go through great links to figure out what your needs are, and then they match that up with what fits in their budget and what kind of solutions we offer. So um, a lot of times they give us this laundry list of things that is you know, four or five pages long, could be this incredible RFP, and they say, well, we only have $5,000. Okay, 
Right. All right, excellent. Let's see if we can make this work in WordPress. Will this work for you? Can you compromise on this? And uh, things of that nature. But the overarching thing is, at the end of the day, most of the time, the client does not care what content management system is. They just want their website to work. What they do is they come to us because they buy our trust that we're going to give them what will work best for them and have an end result that they're happy with. So, yes, sir. You said at the beginning that you have to trust your sales department to, yeah. to sell what you guys can yeah. deliver. Outline your sales process for us. How, how early do project managers get into the conversation with the client? I mean, do you guys price the project and the sales guy is there to say yes or no? Or okay, yeah. do you guys get stuck with what the sales guys sell and then that figure out? Little column A, little column B. Let me, let me speak a little bit to our company's culture. We're all friends. So the business development team isn't like a cutthroat car salesman try to sell whatever just to get a sale and then say, Sorry, Garrett, you're screwed. Here, buddy, here's your four thousand dollar project. Make it happen. You know? and, and we don't work like that. Like we are, we work very. Our project managers and our uh, what we call ICTs or interactive client teams, the people who deal with the client on a daily basis, they actually work very closely with sales. Before sales even makes the sale, half the time they come ask me, "Hey, do you think we can do this in this amount of time for this amount?" And I'll say. Uh, Possibly, maybe you can do this instead. Have you asked this question, this question, or uh, are they happy with this instead? So we're actually very, uh, we, we actually talk a whole lot. So we do trust our sales team to make the right call. Um, I feel sorry for anybody that doesn't have that kind of repertoire, because I'm sure that there's a lot of um, inner fighting that, that'll happen between there. So if anybody here can speak to, <laughs> Uh, speak to that kind of process. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm very, very thankful I work in a company where we don't have to deal I've with I've definitely that. seen the best results come from when the sales department from the beginning, like before that actually had got approved and they actually submitted the proposal that they talked over it with some of the people who've been more experienced with working on Drupal projects and kind of like talked through it to see, hey, let's kind of figure out what it would take, what type of content types they, they want to create from this, the type of views, and really kind of going more into detail beforehand. Like, so it, it is good for them to ask those questions or get that baseline before creating that proposal so you don't get stuck with, with the question. That's, that's a very it. interesting point is that um, the sales team actually took time, a significant time to come train with us on Drupal so that they know how to make content types and they know exactly what a content type means. So when they're trying to explain it to a potential client, they know what they're saying. They're not just like making stuff out of the air and hoping that they're charging the right cost for it. There, there is some responsibility on us as project managers too, though. Once we get the sale, they can be as specific as they can. But even like our sales team's pretty knowledgeable. They still don't do it every day. They don't know as much. So and the clients don't exactly know. It's the whole um, the staff paid example. It's really easy to sit down with a potential client and say, "Yeah, we can make all of your staff have their own page and pull in their work." But then when you sit down at the kickoff of your drawing stuff out and sketching, that's when it can go wild and crazy or it can kind of scale back and that's where the flexibility needs to come in that you can say, we envision this, we can do this, yes, but we're going to have to kind of change some things around and figure out what work. Bit. Yeah, so it's a little, it's a little bit of both. The more that the sales team can do, the better and we can kind of take it from there. Do you have another question? No, that, that was where the question actually came okay. from. I wanted to ask how savvy your sales guys have to be, but then I heard that the project managers are talking to clients and asking these questions, so I figured it wasn't the sales yeah, guys doing we, it. We hire people that love to do, do the work themselves almost to a fault. So that most of the time they're like, dude, just delegate that. You know what I mean? Just <laughs> please pass that off so you can get to move it. So uh, we're blessed that we have a sales team that cares and is interested in the technical aspect. Um, as we expand, we'll see how that goes. Um, Right now we're all in the same building, they have their own little wing, but what's going to happen the day that they have to move out of that and can't have that interaction? So we'll cross that bridge when we come, with, uh, come to it, but yes sir. How do you establish your priorities? If you've got a $5,000 contract, you get so much. If you've got a $10,000 contract, you get so much. Where Where is the line for you guys? <coughs> Project manager, you want to fill that one in the kickoff? Uh, we, we try to send them some documentation ahead of time okay. about like what's your areas to mark and all the kind of typical stuff like what's important to you revenue wise, what's important to you just because it's important to you that kind of thing and we sit down with them and try to rank them out and also that's the point where we can see at this point they should know kind of how complex they want each of these sections to be but maybe not and so it's good to get as many people there we do a kickoff we, for the Drupal stuff we try to do a big kind of involved half day, follow up with another day of it. Okay. And so it's a lot of figuring out with them. And you know, it's again, it's hopefully they can identify a lot of this in the sales process. And so they know, 
you know, we're a hotel, we want to book rooms. That's about it, you know, and so we know that, but a lot of times they want to book rooms and fill up the spa. So we've got to kind of uncover those things. Okay. Um, well, and, a, and a lot of the times, um, you know, on a, let's say on a $10,000 project, you already kind of know ahead, and, and we know it and shifts somewhat with the clients of, you know, 40% of this time is going to be dedicated to this task of, of designing, and another 40% is going to be dedicated to this task of developing, and another 20% is going to be delegated to these other tasks of finalizations, making sure everything's right, um, content, you know, importing your content, things like that. So um, oftentimes, when you break those those hours down like that, and, and you know, you don't have to break it down to the hour or to the minute, but you chunk those things off, you can get to a point where you you can send them an email or have a phone call on this mid-project and say, listen, we budgeted this many hours for this. Um, we're getting close to that limit and we haven't finished that task. Um, you know, would you like us to keep working on this? And if so, we can trim some time from somewhere else. Maybe your, your blog isn't as customized, but your staff page is, is customized to the max. Okay. Um, so there, there is some kind of shifting hours around there, but um, oftentimes clients are real, I think, understanding you know, when they ask for a, you know, then they ask for a shopping cart, and they say, oh, we, we just want to import a, a small portion of our products. Okay, well, that, that sounds pretty easy, but if they have 50,000 products and a small portion is 5,000, and, you know, that, that may be small to them, it's yeah. not small to us. And if we explain that to them, oftentimes, it's, oh, okay, you know, we were understanding 20 products, you were understanding 5,000. Yeah, and the question I always ask in kickoffs is, uh, at the end of this project, you're going to judge us based on something. What is it? So is it more contact forms being filled out? Do you want more phone calls? Uh, is it book rooms if you're a hotel? Because at the end of the day, if that CEO doesn't see that one number that he wants to see, we're screwed. You know, we, the, the marketing manager may have other ideas, and they're, they're so creative, and we want to do this, and we want to show Flash on the homepage, so it uh, looks all busy and great and everything like that, but we try to explain to them very calmly and carefully that you know, we know that you're going to judge us on this, so let's try to keep that goal in mind. So hopefully that kind of does a little bit. It doesn't up for you, I know it's kind of... No, it was, it was a good answer you can get without giving actual life. Yeah, I mean... You're giving me the documentation so I can read it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I can do that too if you want. <laughs> yes, ma'am. What is the project management tool using? Is it like a template like that? Uh, we use SugarCRM. Have you ever heard of it? Uh, I don't know how many people in here use it. We implemented it at the beginning of this year. Um, last year. The, the last year. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. The time flies. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've been using it for about two years now. Um, we tried Basecamp. It never really worked for our company. It's a great tool for certain people, uh, but it just never worked uh, for us. So have you ever heard of Sugar? I'm not, but is that is it transparent to the customers or do your salespeople just keep saying we're working on it? We're working That's a wonderful question. Um, it is not transparent to our customers now. But we are in the process of rolling out like a support desk thing, mm -hmm. where when we submit a case or a ticket internally, there is a version of that that the client can view. Mm -hmm. And then when they log in, actually log into our sugar system, but they have the stripped down version that they can see, where, okay, here's the case number, here's the question, and here's all the follow-up responses to that. So that actually comes into our system, um, but they don't see the full, the full thing, so. I was yes. wondering, uh, just kind of a high level, what do you find when you're building sites with clients, the Drupal is like especially good for, apart from just customization in general. And what do you find Drupal is not good for? I think when I, something I've seen that is good for is clients who have like a various pieces of content that are kind of going to be that look the same, like <coughs> different type of content types. A lot of content types, um, like if they, if they have news about us, maybe they have media, photos, things that. Groups of content, but each group is pretty much similar. Uh, I don't know if that's a, a good way to explain it. I know we just um, we had a, a home builder that the site worked really well for in a pool company because they've got spas, but they've got circle spas or rectangle spas, and they've got homes that are two level homes, one level homes, two garage, and they're in different communities. Maybe the same home plan is available in different communities, and so it's a great way to just put something in, and you can put it in both communities. You can add one type of pool and put it in each category because it does have a waterfall also along with the grotto, which the grottos are super cool. Um, <laughs> so that's where we've seen the like the really limiting the input and the administration from from the client, where they can just add something once and kind of use it in different ways. Um, the more kind of dynamic sites is what I've, I've seen. Those are the two best examples. Uh, like I said, we use uh, we use WordPress. Tendency in Drupal, and we use them in very specific fashions. Not like to think of it kind of like a family and a home. 
you just get married and you move into an apartment, you know, you kind of don't have quite, a, quite the budget, you can move into a lower cost of apartment and start to save your money, but eventually you want to have a family, so you have one child. Well, you may be able to still get around in there, but you suddenly realize the kid's getting too big for that, and you need to move to a new home. Next thing you know, you have five kids, God, that never happens to me, <laughs> and then maybe you need a mansion, do you know what I mean? And that's kind of the way we, we, we see it. With WordPress, we utilize that to take care of the brochure websites, we can do it fairly cheaply, it's wonderfully easy to develop in, uh, but at a certain point they outgrow that and they may need another step, so that's when we move to Tendency. And tendency is out of the box, it's a little more expensive, it has a lot more bells and whistles, things that um, WordPress may not uh, have inherently. Now, I know WordPress, I know that it can do it, but this is just the way our company functions. So, uh, And then eventually they outgrow that, and if it's extremely custom, like Derek was speaking about, we can then move to Drupal. Um, hopefully, we get all that up front, and we don't have to continually migrate them from system to system, because that would be uh, ridiculous. But that's kind of the levels that we use, the three different content management systems. Does that, does that help? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Okay, so I'll move on real quick. Uh, thanks for all the great questions. Um, so, like I said, we sell custom solutions. Like, we have these three content management systems that we have the ability to use. But um, when we're talking specifically about Drupal, We've had a, you know, a ton of clients, and we absolutely love our clients. They're the one that gives them your paycheck, they're the one that pays all of us. So we want to keep them, we want to make sure that they're happy. But at a certain point, if you're hemorrhaging money and you realize you've gone 200 hours on a 100 hour project, you know, you've got to do something about it. So we're going to try to give you some of these takeaways. So we're going to try to give you four tips, one for each of us that you can take home and hopefully take right to your project management as it goes, whether it's uh, you can implement this upfront or once the bleeding is already uh, started. So, Derek? Yeah. Uh, my biggest tip that I try to do, and it's not always incredibly easy, is to convey to the client, you didn't buy a website. Um, and they think, I go through check, I bought a website. And the, the difference is, you know, we sell them a block of hours, or we have them for a few months to do the Scrum technique, which I think is amazing, by the way, I'm going to have to talk to you guys about because it it's super cool. Sure. Um, <laughs> where you, you have these clients on for a couple months, or it's a 90 day project, 200 hours, and these pieces go go into that, and a lot of times the person you know the sales team is dealing with, they write a check, and then they've got their team that handles it, and then you meet with that team, and now you've got this disconnect, and they, they might think we bought a site, and that even the person who understands the right part of the check understood, or even if they understand it, they hear, you know, here's a check, thank you for our block of hours to make our website. And you're like, no, 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 stop talking after a block of hours because thank you for the block of hours. Thank you for having us on retainer for two months to build our site. And that's where that's where it can really help in the beginning. And the, and the whole point of it isn't really to be mean. It's it really just manages their expectations and yours. So they don't you don't hear that, well we thought. Because it's very clear to everybody. And we don't want to say, well we thought this, and they say no. It goes both ways. It's like I'm trying to think of an example. Like if you go to a opening release of Star Wars. You're going to wait in line for three hours. And you know that. Going into it, you know you're going to wait in line, so it's it's not bad. You enjoy it and dress up as Darth Vader. Um, you don't have that either. I did. <laughs> Once. <laughs> I didn't dress up as Darth Vader, but I waited in line to see Star Wars. Thank you very really much. Um, so, it's, it's, and they don't do it, it's just part of it, and it's just understanding so everyone gets along better and is happy with the process, and they end up getting something better out of it, and you don't so Just to follow up a little bit, it's Derek's job to make sure that that project happens within the amount that's sold. We're honestly not trying to be jerks. We told them how much we thought it was going to cost, and when they come up with something that's outside of that, that's when Derek needs to say, hey, you know, no, we, we estimate this amount of hours, we're really not trying to be jerks to you guys, but this has to happen in this way, yeah. otherwise. If it goes longer, a three-month three project takes a year. Yeah. They get upset, and you get upset, you're like, I want it to be live, and they're like, we want it to be live, we go, let's all do it, but the, no one is on the same page, so it just never happens. So, so yeah, I think I'll, it being up front and just everybody <clears throat> being on the same page as early as possible and as long as possible really helps out the process. What's your tip? Um, my tip, I would say just, just something, in, and this is project management with Drupal, um, is like establishing with the client um, content types, knowing specifically what content types they would like have them think about the type of content types that we create. Because a lot of times if they sit down and say, okay, I know I want events, articles, blogs, photos, um, you can uncover additional things and additional functionality that they want. So if I have, usually we'll break out what content types they want and from that also maybe create a list of fields 
specifically for those content types and then breaking down the functionality of those fields. I like to do that from the beginning so we'll know exactly what they want into their website. Some of the ways we'll list out fields, some people use like an Excel spreadsheet and they just say these are the fields that you say you want for this particular content type. How should they function? Should this be a text field? Should this be a select box? Do you want this to be a taxonomy term? Do you want this to actually link to another page? So I think maybe like from the beginning of your projects, kind of establishing what content types, how those should function, and then even as, as far as saying, okay, on this particular content type, let's say articles, do you want this to be a, a block on the home page with a list of articles? Do you want a, a page view that lists all of these? Um, so those, those are my tips, is just kind of getting with your client as early as possible to establish what types of content the website will have and how the input of that content will function. Yeah, and we know within a company about six to eight content types is normal. And if he goes to that kickoff meeting and all of a sudden he's got 12 to 14, he knows that within that he's, got to, he's going to have to do something because we have an accurate hour estimate and he's going to have to, have to figure out a way to make that work. So, Jamo? So, so again, to kind of hit on um, a finished, you know, packaged up, produced, ready to go product is much, much easier to demo. Uh, it's much easier to kind of sell again to reuse because you don't have to build it all from scratch. Um, how many people are familiar with, with features module and are using features module? Anybody? Hope to see more hands. Because features module lets you do exactly this within Drupal. Um, back two years ago, we were building our you know, first staff module and then you know, second time, it's a little easier. The third time, it's a little easier. And I'm starting to think, well, hey, we're getting the hand of building the staff module. We're cutting our hours down. Well, with features now, we, we built one staff module, exported with features a long time ago, and now we just install that as a module and turn it on. Uh, and if, you, if someone wants a change, they need extra fields, we can simply add those changes, re-export it, version it off. And that way, we can maintain that idea of having a, a packaged, uh, finished product. Um, they, they put up a quote from our tendency program that's written in Python. And there's a, a, I guess, kind of a, a motto, a motto, theme. A motto a theme. Uh, don't repeat yourself, DRY, you've probably heard that before. Features lets you do that. Um, it lets you build once and sell it many more times. Cool. So that's my tip. Cool. And my tip is your client doesn't know what's normal. Um, everybody in this room probably does this all day, every day. Uh, your client does not. They may be an oil and gas person, CEO. They may be the marketing manager for uh, a doctor or something like that. They don't know what's normal. So in our company, we know if we've sold a 200-hour project, that about 100 hours in, you should probably start to be in the middle phase. If you realize you're at 150 hours on a 200 project, you're, you're screwed at this point. You're like, oh, man, we are way behind. The client doesn't know that. You may be in layout revision 8, you may be in layout revision 9, and you say normal to the client is, you should tell them, we normally do one to two to three revisions of a layout before putting it in the build. That keeps us on track. Once you get to 8 and 9, you kind of start to run in this area where they're not aware that 8 and 9 isn't normal. They want to see a perfected website, everything exactly like it's going to look, when we all know that uh, you can change that text later. You know, It doesn't have to say A instead of and on the mock-up. You don't have to go through the time to change that and give it back. The client needs to know that that's normal, and it's our job as project managers um, to educate them on that and manage their expectation to where, you know, nine layouts is too much. You know, we can change this text like it's a WYSIWYG. You know, we can explain that to them, and eventually they'll get and say, oh, okay, I understand. Um, sure, there are the one-offs where they, they can't get past the fact that the logo isn't, you know, exactly like they want to see or something. You do run into fringe cases, but for the most part, always remember when you're working with a client that they don't know it's normal. It's really hard to step outside of yourself and say, uh, okay, I can remember that this is what I do every day. If you want five revisions, that's crazy. Make sure you let them know that. But don't tell them they're crazy. Just say, make sure you let them know in a nice way. So, um, and that's pretty much it. You can uh, you can follow find us on Twitter, Facebook, and our websites here. Uh, Jamo actually doesn't believe in Facebook, so you won't find him there. Um, he's a rebel. But at this time, if you have any questions, we'd be more than happy to uh, answer them for you. Yes, sir. What, how do you calculate your rates? Uh, we bill, can I say this, Jay? Okay, yeah. Katie says I can say this. <laughs> we bill at $100 an hour. So we go in, we estimate the amount of time it's going to take to physically do something, and then say, let's say that's, that whole thing that you want is going to take about 10 hours. So then we just say, well, that's going to be $1,000. And then we usually tell the client, okay, uh, depending on like the uh, 
the extent of it, if we're pricing out a new, a wholly new client that wants a full new website, we've never heard of them before or anything like that, we'll do what's called fixed bid, meaning we charge them one price and then we kind of use the hours as we go along. Let's say it's a $20,000 project, they have 200 hours, the project manager's job is to make sure that they stay on time and budget within those 200 hours. Um, and like I said, we bill at $100 an hour and it's the sales team's job to figure out it's going to take about 200 hours. So. And then you allocate that based off of like the graphics person. Group exactly, exactly. Exactly. That's why it's so important to upfront kind of just you know be even more specific with what they want because the sales team can say you want this this benefit of this feature and we're going to sell to you for this many hours. But then sitting down with them and saying, okay, we've got ten hours to do this. What are you? What is in your head specifically? Yeah. And this is what we draw stuff out and say, okay, we can do this in ten hours. Or no, 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 this is crazy. We want all this. All right, well, we've got to take ten hours from somewhere. Or put, you know, buy another ten hours, and we can we can do what you want, but it's just making sure that we work within that. A, a really good example is calendar events. Everybody wants calendar events, right? So you ask them, they say, yeah, we want a calendar. Okay, well, great. Well, do you want it to just list the events, or do you want it to have an actual calendar? Uh, do you want those calendars to be able to click through and have people sign up? Is there going to be payment associated with sign up? Are there limits to the number of people that can sign up per event? Are you going to get a discount based on how many events you actually attend in a week or maybe even uh, throughout the year? Do you get a refund if you actually, you know what I mean? So you have to be, when we talk about knowing what questions to ask, those are the type of questions we ask. So sales does the best job of trying to get that out and estimate that amount of hours, but then Derek will come right behind him and try to really dig in and see. So you can confirm or yeah, ask take more questions, more questions just about so that. that just so we can all be on the same page, trying to manage those expectations for sure. Exactly. And a lot of times, the kind of breakdown that you were touching on of, of how those hours works that usually comes up in the sales process, and it, it can often be a function of the client's budget. So if yeah. if, if they need lots of content types, but they don't care how the site looks, we can trim some budget by not building them a custom design, a custom theme. Um, you know, you'll, you'll see that a lot for some of our, uh, or kind of vice versa for WordPress. Maybe they, they have a real small budget. Well, you know, go pick out a template and we'll implement that for you so we don't have to spend the time building it. Uh, the flip side is they want a totally custom website and all it does is pages. It's just pages. Um, so there we, we spend less time on development but a lot more time on design. Cool. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Do you use Drupal at all to help you with um, meeting social media needs for clients? Like yeah, I... Sort of? Sure. I, I don't... We can use any content management system to help with social media needs. Um, the one thing I've noticed, and, I, and if anybody in terms of WordPress fanatic, please help me out here, but we've been able, we, Drupal with Facebook Connect, we found to work pretty damn well. So we, we can implement pretty effectively uh, Facebook Connect with Drupal to where, um, it, we did, well. right, huh? Twitter as well. Twitter, well, well, Twitter, yeah, I mean, you can pull tweets in on anywhere, but we were able to, we were able to have people log into a website using their Twitter account instead of having to sign up for a Drupal account and then, you know, uh, make a comment on blog posts, for example. So because Drupal has a community that allows to have these modules or us modifying those modules to make that happen, we have been able to do that. Uh, not to say it can't be done on Tendency or on WordPress, uh, it's just something we haven't actually crossed the boundary of yet. A lot of times we operate on, uh, well, the, the client wants it, so all right, well, let's figure it out, you know, which is fun for me because I was like figuring new things out. So uh, that's the major difference, but as far as, um, Pulling in tweets on a page, not difficult. Pulling in Flickr photos on a page, not difficult. All of them have their own APIs that we can hook into and just kind of you know, mod yeah, modify how we want. So I hope that kind of answers your yeah, question. Yeah, okay. yeah, the, the feeds module helps a lot, too, if you're, if you're trying to pull in some of that content and, and kind of store it and spit back out in a different way. Yeah, I was just wondering what different, I guess I'm wondering what different organizations do. Because we have our website that's on Drupal. And then kind of our social media, um, social media strategy, and I'm kind of trying to think, well, how do I, what do I need to do with Drupal to kind of get them working more? Probably anything you need to do, you can make happen in Drupal. And our communications director is sitting right there, and she would love to talk to you <laughs> <laughs> about your social media strategy. You got no budget, so I'm about <laughs> <laughs> Well, the good thing about it's a great point, is, though. You know, <laughs> Right. Yeah. Actually, our company does believe in knowledge sharing, so she will talk to you for hours if you want, as long as she's here and doesn't have to go home. I'll so, her home. There you go. She would love to do that. So, any other questions? Yes, sir. Is there anything with uh, Drupal 7 that you're excited about that either will make your workflow easier or will mm -hmm. save you an extra widget that you can advertise? Yeah. 
I get this question a lot, and I'm going to preface it by saying we don't employ Drupal 7 yet because it's not profitable for our company because most of the modules haven't been ported over that we yeah. need. So I will say that. Yeah. I don't have an accurate answer for you because of that. Ask me in six yeah. months. Yeah, okay. That's interesting. I'm excited about the UI. Yeah, yeah there you go. Um, um, okay. Okay. The UI is something I'm really excited about because we find some of our clients, and they may be um, less tech savvy than my grandmother. So, um, so then coming in and asking. Is it your part, grandmother or granddad that asked what the internet was? When you're like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was explaining to my, my grandfather where I work, and I said, we build websites. Well, what's a website? I said, well, it's you know, on the internet. And he said, what's the internet? I stopped talking. Right then. <laughs> <laughs> it's a series of tubes. Yeah. 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 So, um, so, anyway, so in, in WordPress, we find that people are able to get around in the back end because it's so manufactured yeah. and manicured. Yeah. And in Drupal, we can do some things in Drupal 6 and use certain themes to, to try to employ a lot of that. But the Drupal 7 stuff I'm most excited about is that it's, it's kind of consistent across all sites. And hopefully from now on, most Drupal sites, 7 sites, will use that same UI. Yeah, so it'll be, be, uh, so it'll be so easier for your client. Sure. Exactly. Well, just think that. We have a saying in our company called that says ease of use changes behavior. So we have a congressional client, and uh, we actually they, where their their uh, their site is on the house servers, and Drupal would make more sense for them because of what they do, but we use WordPress instead because the back end interface is so intuitive that anybody can just log in and figure out what to do. Okay. So um, if that's the case, and I know all of house.gov is going to Drupal, so we may consider porting that over to Drupal 7 now that the back end interface is more usable for that user. Oh, I was going to comment, with Drupal 7, it's a lot easier to customize for roles. Okay. So you can customize the back-end interface for your editors, mm -hmm. your community yeah, admins, awesome. and so you can see, you'll see a lot more work. More yeah, because that's okay. a sub-toolbar, right? With the, you got the, you got the dashboard, you've got the, uh, yeah, the shortcut bar. Navigation bar. Well, shortcut bar, that's the yeah. best call, yeah. Which is excellent, because how many times have you heard a client go in, and you're like, yes, yeah, it's just a static block, go edit it, but you get to the blocks page, and they look at it, and they're like, <laughs> for you workflow, I'm like, well, where's the content I need to edit? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know about this. <laughs> Shipple? Do you guys edit your clients' content, or is it always, you can educate your clients on how to use Yeah, your that, that's a very good question, and it's, with our company, we, we, we are a moral and ethical company, so what we will not do is write posts under the name of the client. We try to educate them as best as we can, and if we do write posts for our client, we make sure to be very clear that we are the ones that are writing it on their behalf or as part of their staff. So, do you want to kind of feel that one a little bit? Um, yeah. I was okay. going to say, a lot of times it, it definitely depends on the project, but we do push a lot of education, and we want our clients to have the ability to edit and feel comfortable with editing their content. Um, we will do it if it's in the project and, and, and the client was like, hey, we want y'all to add all our content. But from a like formatting up front. Yeah, we do formatting up front, but stuff. we in general want to put power in the hands of clients to have the ability to edit their content. And it's not like an old school, old school webmaster type position where anytime they need to make a change, they have to track us down on the phone or something like that. We, we try to get the client to a position where they feel comfortable with editing and their own and we do that. We do have some clients we do full webmastering from. And let, let me be clear, I was speaking more towards uh, writing okay. custom blog content or tweeting for somebody. Well, was, yeah. As opposed to, yeah, like just general static content pages. Like, yeah. Yeah. We do format a lot of content. Part of our uh, QA before we go live is to make sure all the pages look good. So we have page, uh, pictures on there and links throughout there and stuff like that throughout their site. So. Some people, no matter how much you teach them, they just want to get ahead of them. Yeah. And so they'll, they'll send us a Word doc and say, put this in, at this URL, make it look pretty. And which and is totally fine. Which too. we can add a page, sure, you know, but as far as like writing words, don't want us writing medical content. Yeah. <laughs> they will always have those people those. Yeah, true. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Two analogies I've used because some of my clients, you have to educate about the internet. Um, they'll ask, you know, what is the internet? And I'll basically say it's like a hardware store. Mm -hmm. You can go in there, you can buy things, you can look at things, you can talk to your other friends or whatever. You can look at the bullet board and sometimes get coffee. And then they asked me about social media, and I said, well, you already have social media. It's called the beauty parlor. It's where you go to find out who's doing what, you know, who, who had a baby, and then gossip. And they instantly get it and they go, oh, now I understand Facebook. That helps. Yes, sir. So, do y'all charge for copywriting and providing content if the client wants that? Uh, we actually do not have a copywriter on staff. Although, so. although we. Depending on workload, and a lot of it has to do with what the content is. For this is Katie Laird. She <laughs> is our Shipple's uh, communications director. So. 
So yeah, I'm not She's not some random chick. I'll take it over. Shut up! <laughs> so a lot of it really depends on, on what it is. So if it's super technical, mechanical engineering, plastic surgery, clearly that isn't something we have any expertise in. But I mean, we are web marketers, um, so we, we will consider uh, the option. Or we have a lot of partners we can outsource to do copywriting. Um, that being said, and I think we've touched on this pretty well, we are willing to provide most any level of service someone is willing to pay for. So if there is a request and it's reasonable and there's a budget, we will find a way to make it happen. Whether it's writing, whether it's using our SEM team to optimize content, um, it, it can be done if it's ethical and reasonable. Yeah, and, and slowly, uh, copywriting, is, especially on the internet, is uh, merging with copyright. Uh, copywriting is merging with search engine optimization because you have to write a certain way for the web, and there is a special art to that. Uh, we have people to do that. Rob is in the back corner of it, and he's one of our SEO analysts. He actually writes that kind of content, so he'll do it as best as he knows how to actually speak to the end user as well as speak to uh, Google, which is a weird concept. Um, but yeah, so but we don't actually have a full-time copywriter on staff. Uh, I don't know if that helps you at all. Yeah, no, that's where a big problem that, that I always find is waiting for the client. For oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't you love that? Here, here's a trick for you. Next time you're waiting on content, take a Microsoft Word document, find every single URL that you're missing content for, put that title at the top of a page, and hit Control-R and step to the next page, put that title, I mean Control-Return, and send it to them. Because you know how easy it is for them to work in Microsoft Word? They'll just type all day on that page and hit return, go to the next page, type all day on that. They'll send it back and suddenly you have your content and they don't realize that they were working on the internet. So, Wait, you, you mean you just gave them a Word doc? Yeah, right. Right. Just, just give them a Word doc. The title of pages. The title of pages, the title of page on the internet. History, whatever. Save it, send it to them, and they'll just fill it out. Like, oh, I can write in Microsoft Word, I get this. Just and then they'll send it back and just drop it in. Just put pictures of cats and say those stay until you get words. <laughs> <laughs> So I get that a lot of your clients are really unsavvy when it comes to the technical underpinnings of the web and For the book, yeah, CMS yeah. websites. What portion of your clientele are at the other end of the spectrum, technically savvy, have an in-house IT department or programming staff that you're working with? Do you develop That's a good systems question. that you didn't turn over to the client? To we turn staff? everything over to the client, especially with, with Drupal. Like we've had a lot of clients that they say, we have all the stuff here, we just need someone to set it up and get all of the functionality working, we can host and do everything. So we work with them, get it all done. They set up their environment at their place, we pack it up and say, here you go, and then they kind of take it from there. I think we help them install. I think we can switch it up in where a person is an IT person, he's an IT professional, but he's not as familiar with Drupal. And then we get to the time when it's time to give them the site for them to install, and now all of a sudden we have a lot of conflict because they didn't know specifically yeah. how to set it up. So yeah. that's, that's again managing expectations and trying to keep that communication going ahead of time. We try and we try and make sure we work with those guys early. So exactly. if you've got some experience you want and we'll do training with them for long periods and we ultimately hope that they can kind of take over. I mean and that'll happen where they'll have so much of it that we're not doing as much work. Right. That's Sometimes cool. they break things still though. Yeah. And, <laughs> and you can fix it. Fix it. Fix it. So um, you know, it's just a matter of properly educating those people as early as you can and trying to get them on your side, too. Well, I, I think we have time. I think to follow that is before you do something that you're not sure what you're doing, check with us. Yeah. It's yeah. easier yeah. than yeah. you can fix. <laughs> 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 we have time for one more question. How do, you, uh, how do you manage all that upfront time during the handshake with all the education? That, how, do you, how do you keep that in front? That's the hardest part. Because this is what happens, and Derek went to a kickoff meeting, I don't know, three weeks ago or something like that, and we had a full day agenda plan. They knew it was going to take a full day, but we go in, and for about the first hour and a half, two hours, they talked about themselves, which is what always happens. They would love to talk about themselves, which is good, because you want to understand you the client. Right. Yeah, sure. And then he goes, all right, well, let's talk about some Drupal terms, and you can just see them all go. Mm -hmm. This kind of check out. So it's got to yeah. keep reinforcing it and making it Okay. A part of the process. Another tip maybe to save some time is there's like there's a lot of resources online, so sending the client over links and pointing them to where they can get external education. Okay. So you might not be spending as much time, time sitting on down with them, but okay. if you can send them a link to Drupal.org that talks about the terms or just explains what a content type is and those type of things, they can actually be looking at that on their own time and doesn't affect the hours that we have. 
Well, I'm trying to avoid the terminology we all know about Drupal. Don't use the word no. They have no yeah. idea what that means. Yeah. Don't use the word view. They could care less. It's going to be a list of all your blog posts. Yeah. Got that. Got it. It's going to be... You can write down some of them. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so you can you know, write it in your head or whatever, and you're structuring it out and seeing it being built. But remember, the terminology that we all use, they have no clue of. And they, they never care. really need to know. And don't care. Yeah. Can I put the content on my site? Does it work? Cool. Okay. All right, thank you all. It's 10.30. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it.